If you're like me, then you're always on the lookout for cool new software that might be useful to you. So as usual, I've got a list of awesome programs that you should really know about if you don't already. And of course, these are all free and will work on Windows, though many will also be compatible with Mac as well. And at the end of the video, if you're interested, I'll have links to other lists of free programs I've made, Chrome extensions, that kind of stuff. But anyway, enough rambling, let's go. Starting off, a very useful program that I hope most of you have already called 7-Zip. It's an extremely popular program for compressing files, extracting them from so all sorts of file containers. It's very similar to the uh, infamous WinRAR, except it's free and supports more file types. So if you come across some weird file container that you've never seen before, this will handle whatever you throw at it. And anything from zip files to rar files, even tar.gz files typically seen on Linux. And it also has a proprietary file container called the 7z format, which they claim to have better compression ratios. So you can even use that if you want. After you install the program, you'll get a new option in the context menu where you can, for example, add files to an archive. And as you can see, you get a ton of different options, most of which you don't even need to change or even know about, but they're there if you want them. And these include compression level, so you can have it try to compress as much as possible or not at the cost of time. You can also encrypt the container and add a password in case you don't want anyone snooping. And of course, you can open file containers as well the same way, see what's inside them and extract them wherever you want. Overall, it's a pretty simple but extremely useful program. Next up is also very useful and actually kind of fun too in a way. It's called WinDeerStat. And what it does is quickly scans either your whole hard drive or just a certain directory and visually shows you what files are taking up a lot of space. So as you can see, when you first run it, you'll select what you want to scan and then it'll just show the progress with a basic chart of what it found so far. But that's not the interesting part, which comes after it's done. Now we can really take a look at what's going on. You can see the blocks here are arranged by file location. So the files in the same directory will be next to each other and also the file types are color coded. So it's easier to see if a lot of space is being taken up by a lot of smaller files of the same kind. And when you hover over a block, at the bottom it will tell you what the file is and if you click on it, it will show what directory it's in in the table above and you can see more details like exactly how big it is and if it's something you don't care about, you can delete it right from there by right clicking. I bet I don't have to tell you how useful this program can be and I bet you'll find at least a couple of huge files that you didn't even know were there. Just be careful of what you're deleting it from. You don't want to delete any system files or anything like that. All right, number three is Media Player Classic, or MPC for short. Now, I know most of you know about VLC, but MPC is arguably even better and more lightweight, especially considering VLC has gotten pretty bloated over the years, I would say. For example, MPC doesn't do that thing that VLC does where you close the program and it keeps playing for some reason. It doesn't do that. Also, interestingly enough, Media Player Classic will make videos look better. And this is because for some reason, VLC uses a different gamma value that tends to make videos look washed out and low contrast, especially with black levels. And I mean, really, watch the same video with both VLC and MPC and you'll see a difference. So yeah, if you're still using VLC, it's so last year. Moving on, number four is a program called Everything for searching for files on your computer. And you may be wondering, well, why do I need that if Windows already has a built-in search? But if you've actually ever used Windows to search for a file, you realize that it takes forever. It's incredibly slow, might not even find the file in the first place. But with everything, well, it's pretty much instant. It's actually surprising. It indexes all the files and then can grab from that index and tell where a file is instantly. And it will show you all the files in whatever directory you start in. So you can just search in there or you can search from the whole computer from the top level directory. And then you have other options like displaying thumbnails or searching only certain file types, that sort of thing. Once you start using it, you'll probably wonder how you ever survived without it before. Next, number five is Handbrake. It's a free and open source video transcoder or video converter, if you will. And if you've ever searched for video converter on Google, 
you know that there are a ton of random ones out there that you have to pay for and they aren't even that good. So this on the other hand is both simple and powerful with lots of advanced settings if you need them. For output formats, it doesn't really have too many options, mainly just MP4, but you can select from several different codecs to use, like H.264, even H.265, if you know what those are. As for input though, it will handle almost everything. This can be anything from MP4 to MOV, FLV, WebM, AVI, ProRes, and a bunch of others that you probably never heard of either, but they do support it. One of the cooler features is that it also has a bunch of presets for different devices or programs if you're not sure what settings to use. It doesn't take rocket science to figure it out. And just a couple of advanced features are things like deinterlacing. So if you have a 1080i file, you can put it in 1080p. You got support for subtitles, even rotating the video, a bunch of stuff. So if you ever come across a weird video format that might play on your computer, but nothing else, you can probably use Handbrake to convert it to MP4, which is basically universal. All right, now the next thing on the list isn't exactly a program itself, but I'll still include it. It's actually a website called Ninite, you might have heard of it, and it lets you install several popular programs all at once without having to go searching for the site for each program, downloading them, and installing them individually. So this is so useful if you like get a new computer and have nothing installed yet, it takes no time at all to get everything back and running. To use it, you just go to the site, pick whatever programs you want, and it will generate an installer specifically with what you picked and then it runs through all the different installations automatically. You might have to still choose some settings for some of them, but it's still really easy. Half the work is gone. And you can see some examples here. They have like Chrome, Skype, 7-Zip as we mentioned, iTunes, Dropbox, Steam, everything you've heard of, and way more. And yes, it is always checking for new versions of all the programs, so you don't have to worry about it giving you an old version or something like that. All right, finally we have Plex, a program that is really great for anyone who downloads a lot of TV shows or, or movies to your computer completely legally, obviously. And it's pretty popular, so you may have even heard of it before, but it basically creates a media server on your computer that lets you stream your media files to all your other devices. And there are other basic programs out there that might let you do this, but I don't think any of them have as many features or have such a nice interface especially. It almost reminds me of like Netflix where it'll show you cover art for the shows and episodes, uh, tell you which ones you still have to watch, and here's the cool thing, it goes out and collects that info about the media automatically. Based on the title of the video file and how you organize the folders, it should be able to figure out what show or movie it is. Then it will download all the cover art, metadata, and even descriptions, all this stuff like that is really awesome. It does take a bit of work to get Plex configured since you have to like choose a file path for where the library will be and then make sure all the episodes and files are organized in those folders. But once it's set up, it's pretty easy. And what's especially great is pretty much every device has a Plex app that you can use to stream to it. I mean, obviously on your phone, but there's also one for Xbox, PlayStation, uh, LG TVs, Samsung TVs, Roku, Apple TV, and others. They do have a paid version, which adds some features like streaming from the cloud, but the free version pretty much is everything you'll need anyway. Now, you know what? I think I'll throw in another program as a bonus. It's not something you'll need a lot, but you know, you might at some point, may as well talk about it. This one is called Audacity, which is simply a free audio editor. It's been around forever, and I think you could probably use it for a few things. For example, if you want to record your voice for something, uh, you can do that, or add a simple sound effect to a file, like noise reduction, or even trim the audio file. Like maybe you have a song that you like to listen to on your computer, but there's like a long space of silence at the end for some reason, you can just edit that out. So yeah, you might never need it, but at least now you know what you can use if you need to, you can just remember that. So that is it, a collection of free programs you will hopefully find very useful. And if you know any others that you think I should talk about in a future video, feel free to comment or tweet at me on Twitter. I'm just at Theo Joe, and you can follow me on there if you want as well. 
If you want to subscribe, I usually make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, like I said before. And I have a couple other videos you might like, such as even more free programs or Chrome extensions. You can just click on those right here. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So I'll see you next time. Have a good one.